So today, let's take a look at replacing the bearings in this BODC motor for the 58 volt Echo brushless string trimmer. So this is the 58 volt, the older Echo battery platform. Not to be confused with the newer 56 volt, what Echo calls the E-Force. I have an older video on this Echo 58 volt when I bought it off of Facebook Marketplace and I repaired it and a viewer was asking about the bearings in the motor and how to replace them. So if you're interested in how to get the BLDC motor out of the string trimmer and that older video I did show taking it apart, this is just a very quick clip of it. I showed taking this apart, taking out the battery holder and the controller. We eventually got to the shroud and the motor. And this one had gotten some water damage, so that's why these bearings were making noise. And I mentioned in that video about possibly changing the bearings. And then more recently, a viewer just contacted me about, could you possibly show how to replace the bearings in this motor for the string trimmer? So fast forward a couple years, and I have taken this back apart. Just to make this video quick, we'll start with the, the complete motor assembly out of it. The first thing we have to do is take a loose this adapter. This adapter is pressed on and we also have a snap ring here. I'm just going to use this cheap pair of snap ring pliers similar to the ones here shown on the screen. These are not nice snap ring pliers by any means but they are thin and for these small snap rings they work pretty well. So I do recommend keeping a set like this around. I wasn't sure the straight jaws were going to get in here, but even the straight jaws did get in here and pull this snap ring right out of the groove, so we got that. We didn't have to do it at this step necessarily, just wanted to make sure the pliers would get in there, and that looks good. We don't need to remove this back snap ring because this looks like it's part of the whole rotor assembly. Now that we got that snap ring slid up, you can tell that the shaft will slide back now. We even had the AC running today, so, so it's loud at times, but you might can hear how dry this bearing is. And you can definitely hear it in that older video as well. But I'm going to take time here on the workbench just to show this motor hooked up to a BLDC controller. We're just going to connect this up to run it so you can hear it. I'm going to use this up to 80 volt BLDC controller. This is the one with no haul, so haulless or sensorless. So I don't even have to hook up my hall sensors here. I can leave this off and just run it. This is a newer controller I've been testing out that works fairly well. It don't start up the best, but it does run the high RPMs very well so far. Now I do have some very fine leads here. These are only rated for a few amps at the most and definitely not capable of running the full power of this motor. But I'm just going to run this with my power supply and I'm going to set it for like three or four amps. I just want to get the speed up not going to really put any load. This is going to be a no load run. And by the way, you can also use the up to 50 volt controller that I've used in the past. It works well too. It's just limited to 50 volts and I was happy to find something that could go all the way to 80 volts. So I'm starting to play around with this one a lot more. But just be aware that they do have two versions. The one with the haul feedback and the one that's hauless. So before I turn the power supply on, I'm going to cut this potentiometer down. I'm going to make sure I hold it here on this aluminum plate away from this part that rotates. So go ahead and cut our power supply on. 55 volts up to 3 amps. And we'll just run it up slow. And hopefully you can hear in the audio just how dry these bearings sound. So I did mention this in my older Echo trimmer repair video. That these bearings must have got wet. And they almost sound a little bit rusty. So I knew they either needed to be cleaned up and lubed or replaced. And as you can hear, they are dry and they do need some work. So I just thought we'd go ahead and do the video maybe to help the viewer out. And maybe some other people would like to see how to replace the bearings as well. We can definitely see one of the bearings. I'm not really sure what to expect on the inside, but we're going to see. One of the first things I'm going to do is bring over this bearing puller set. This is the cheap like bearing separator set. It's not going to hold up for a long period of time and it may not do some tough jobs, but it's just handy to have around for the money to get you out of a jam. And I'm going to use this small uh, bearing separator plate here to try to remove this little adapter or coupler from the motor shaft. I think that's going to work just fine. Just tighten these up. I want to leave it just loose enough where it doesn't grab in that groove, the same groove that the snap ring was in. Just going to go ahead and thread in our 
our standoffs here and this will be our bracket for pushing and we'll put this on so we can push against the motor shaft itself like so let's go ahead and thread these on there and this is our push bolt it's going to run this in not quite all the way because I have a little socket head 1032 bolt that I'm going to put down in here and that's going to help me push on the motor shaft. I like using a socket head because it actually helps keep the push bolt lined up in there as well. I'm just going to use an adjustable wrench here to get this started and get it tight. It's probably going to be very hard to break loose because it's at least pressed in if not maybe even press fitted and green Loctite. The sleeve retaining compound, not really sure. I'm going to have to hold this puller with a, a larger crescent wrench and then I'm going to see if I can get this to pop loose. It is definitely tight. I really don't want to use the impact here because it'll damage your, your push bolt. It's fairly soft. Once I break it free, I might put the impact on it to make it quicker for video, but don't want it to damage the threads for no reason. And there we go. It just popped loose. I think I can probably put the impact on it here to finish up. There we go. No problem. A little bit more and we'll bottom out. Let's back off and let's get this bolt out. And I do have some longer ones. That didn't quite get it. But I do have a little bag here with some different length bolts. And yeah, I think that one there, get it. Let's back this off just a little bit. We'll get it all lined back up. See how that'll get it. Oh yeah, we're off. So that's a little adapter or coupler. And the socket head bolt made pretty easy work of that, pushing it out. Got some old metal filings in here. And where is the snap ring? Oh, it fell off right there. So it's fine right there. We'll just keep up with it. Make sure we put it back on. We should be able to push this shaft out of the bearing now, but not only are we dealing with the shaft friction, believe it or not, those magnets are going to be very, very hard to push off of this motor. They're very strong. Even a motor this small, it's a strong feel there keeping this together. So I'm going to take time here and put the separator set back on here. Well, a little bit different setup here. And I just got a socket on the shaft. Just want to see how hard it is to push the shaft. I can turn this with my finger so it's not very tight. This is probably going to bottom out pretty quick. Yep, absolutely. So I think it's fairly loose. We just got to push it out of there. I don't know if we can do it by hand or not, but it, it may come out. Let's just try to make sure the shaft itself isn't getting caught. And it's actually bouncing back and forth on my fingers. I can feel it going back and forth. So I just got to see if I can just pull it apart here and really tough. There we go. And we do have a different bearing here. I wasn't sure what to expect there. I shared in the older video about the bearing we could see from the outside, the front bearing, but this has a back or rear bearing as well. And this is a little bit smaller OD. It looks like the ID is the same. So this is where the small bearing goes here on the back. And we do have a lot of rust and build up on this motor, as you can see on the stator plates. We're going to need to clean that up. We can see here that we have a 6000Z or 6000ZZ style bearing. And this smaller one, I think I can get this off. Yeah, it came right off. As mentioned, this is a 63800Z. Both of these bearings really feel okay. They're just dry. So cleaning them up and re-lubing them may have got me by. But while I have it apart, I think I'm going to put some new bearings in it. You can take those shields off, those metal shields, and clean those bearings up and re-lube them sometimes, but it's not always worth it. I'm going to take a marker here and just mark this plate and the board. I'm going to remove these three Phillips screws just so I can move that board around. If you can see my, my hall feedback wire is right there at the aluminum tip, and I may need to put that in the vise or get something solid to tap with. So I'm going to see if I can get this board where I can move it and get it in the vise like shown here. I'm just going to get a punch and just knock this bearing out since I'm not going to reuse it anyway. It doesn't matter and it pops right out. 
So I have cleaned this up now. It looks a lot better. I've just taken some emery cloth and I went around the inside and I've also taken this strip and I went across like so on the laminated plates of the stator. Just get that rust off from where that water had gotten there in the past. Also clean the inside up. It's aluminum, so I don't want to take too much off of it. I just want to clean it up. We want to make sure the bearing does fit back in there snug. So just get all the debris out of there and clean it up. And I actually do have a 6000. It is a 6000 2RS. Meaning that it is a double sealed bearing, not shielded, but sealed. It's got the rubber seals. So the rubber seal bearings are better for keeping the grease in and contaminants out. Which could have helped here with this one being left out in the weather at some point, apparently. But there's also some drawbacks. So a lot of times your metal shielded bearings can run at higher speeds. Less friction on that shield since it don't actually touch the inner race of the bearing but I'm gonna put this one in here because it's what I have and I do have to order the 63 800 but let's go ahead and put this 6000 in here and as we push this bearing in and we do want it to be a snug fit we want to push it evenly and we don't want to push the inside or the inner race at all to put pressure on the ball bearings itself we want to tap this from the outside pressing it in is actually better but I'm gonna to have to tap it in that's as far as it'll go but it's straight I do have this bearing and seal kit. This is like a bearing race or seal bushing driver kit. And it's a nice little kit, but it, it doesn't go very small. So even though it's a good price, I probably should have paid more money and got a kit similar to this with a lot more pieces and a lot more sizes. So not really recommending these necessarily because I don't have them. But I did just want to share that I wished I would have taken time to buy something that was a larger set to have around. Just similar to this one or maybe like this that has a lot more size and will be a lot more useful. You can always use a socket or something like that. So the bigger sizes are kind of more important on it really. But I do wish I would have bought a kit similar to these. As I take this one and even put the smallest plate around backwards to the smaller diameter it still won't get me in there to the bearing itself I can't get around the whole diameter here so I just have a socket and I just chose one that's the exact same diameter as this outer race so we can press on that part and we're just going to gently tap this in Almost, just a little bit more to go. It's hard to get this in the vise without making a special bracket. I may have to put some channel or some bars across here, some flat stock to hold this, but I think that's actually just fine. No more than I have to go here. Yeah. Just a little bit more. There we go. That's flush. And that's all it is to it. Back now we have our 63800Z bearing in. Let's go ahead and get it in as well. So very similar to the front bearing. We're just going to tap this in. We're going to concentrate on keeping contact with that outer race as we tap that in. Just a little bit more. And there we go. That worked just fine. The bearings feel good. I got the screws back in the board. I can put the shaft through and slide it back through the bearings like so. There we go. I can go ahead and put the snap ring on. Now for the last step, we're going to press back on this adapter or coupler. See if I can get in a vise like this. Because we're against the shaft here. We're pressing against the shaft. This, we can do this or just tap it. I don't think this is going to slip, but we can put some green Loctite or sleeve retaining compound on here to help with that movement. And there we go, we're back together. 
I do want to test the speed of the motor that way we'll know if the speed is too much for that rubber seal bearing and if I need to get the actual metal shielded bearing I do like the idea of the sealed bearing but if we're running too much speed for it then I have to get the metal shielded bearing as mentioned and there you go that sounds much better I hope you can tell the difference on the video it looks like the rubber shield bearing will be just fine but I'm going to go ahead and assemble this back together and this is also seen in that previous video if you would like to see it so I hope you found this video helpful today if you did please like share and subscribe I'm going to have some links down in the video description of a lot of these tools I shared today and some other helpful and useful items that I like to use on my workbench. Any of those links you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.